Earlier today, Minda from My Online Training Hub released this video on YouTube that shows how you can automate emailing from Excel with zero coding. She's demonstrating it in the context of using Power Automate. I'd like to demonstrate an alternative solution using my Visual Cut software. Millet Software has almost 8,000 companies as paid customers, and Visual Cut has a long list of powerful features for automating and distributing reports via email, exports, web dashboards, and so on. I recently added the option to use Excel workbooks as input for Visual Cut automation. As a use case for a demonstration, I'll use a slightly tweaked version of the Excel spreadsheet that Minda used. We have due dates and reminder dates. We have task names and the managers responsible for those tasks, their email address. And I also included a column called include. It starts with a space in the name of the column. A simple Excel formula controls whether it returns true or false. It's basically whether the reminder date is equal to today's date. Visual Cut then loads this Excel workbook either interactively or on a scheduled basis and targets the tasks tab where the data is and elects to group the rows by manager because two of the rows return false those two rows don't appear in the result set. We also harvested single cell named ranges anywhere within the workbook, and those become dynamic tokens that can be used during the automation. Visual Cut then takes this data and generates an HTML message, and the rows for each group becomes an HTML table. Notice also that the HTML table does not include the reminder date column and the email column, and that's because we started those column names with a space within the Excel workbook. This is the Visual Cut user interface. Let's open a workbook instead of a crystal report. Here is the tasks example. Visual Cut detected that it has two tabs. We'll pick up the tasks tab, starting with cell B2. If we preview, we get all the data. It also parsed single cell named ranges and is aware of the dynamic values within the workbook. So one option is to select no bursting, in which case we can send an email with a full data set as an HTML table. What we want is to group by manager. So now we get for each manager, we can see their data set. And if we click OK, I've already set up some settings for this particular workbook. But all we need to do for this particular case is to indicate that we want to email for each group. And the groups are Edo and Minda, as you can see here. They get populated dynamically based on the data found in the workbook at the time that the process runs. And I elected to email from my email address to, we can see that there's a token here called GR first, which stands for the first row in the group. Find me the value in the email column. So for Edo, the email in the first row, and that's parsed here. So the first row has these columns and the email address is edo.millet at gmail.com. The due date is March 3rd. If I go to the last row within that group, which are these tokens, I can see that the last row has a due date of March 7th. For some scenarios like beginning balance and ending balance for each customer, the ability to access and use data from the first row and the last row can be quite handy. If I hover over this field, I can see that it resolves to edo.millet because the current group is edo. If I switch to minda, that resolves to minda at acme.com. Now the single cell named ranges, one of them was DOW, and because of that, when I hover over the subject, it says Thursday's task because the current date is Thursday. That cell within the Excel workbook returns Thursday. Where you would put these tokens in here is you can simply build them like this. You start from nothing, but I can then go to the tokens area. And here's the token for DOW. I double click it. It gets inserted here. And that's how I build up these dynamic expressions. The HTML message itself, you can use an HTML editor and you can embed various pieces from the workbook. So I embedded already the group first manager name in here. Let's just do this from scratch. The manager name, I'll pick up it from here. 
And then the HTML editor allows me to format that. Let's imagine that I also want to add a background color. Let's do this light orange color. I also included here the token for the day of the week and today's date. And finally, there's a special token that gets generated automatically, which is the HTML table group. Here is where that token lives. Insert it from scratch just to show you how that's done. So if I double click this guy, I get the HTML table group. There's another token, which is HTML table all rows, and that will give me the rows for all the groups. So if I preview this and notice that right now the current group is Minda. So if I preview, I should see the data for Minda. And indeed I do. And if I want to page up to Edo, I can click on this up scroller and now I can see the information for Edo. Let's see what happens when I start the process. The two emails got generated. And if I check my email, I can see the incoming email for Edo with the HTML table. Another aspect that I'd like to demo is how you would schedule this process. I can click on this button at the top. Visual Cut has a command line API, so if a batch file or another application generates this command line, the process that we just saw would take place. In our case, we want to schedule this, so I can give it a scheduled task name. Name the batch file. And this is what the batch file looks like. I'm going to close it. Do this daily at 7. Authenticate. And now the task is created. What you see here is a GUI for monitoring and managing scheduled tasks that comes with Visual Cut. If I close Visual Cut and reopen it, here is the row for the tasks workbook. The targeting options that we saw earlier are saved, so I don't need to do this again. And that's what allows the scheduled tasks to run. So just to review, we started with an Excel workbook. Visual Cut allows us to target a particular tab, data range, and decide how we want to group the data. It allows us to exclude certain rows based on this special include column, exclude certain columns from the HTML table by starting their names with a space. We have dynamic tokens that get harvested from single cell named ranges within the Excel workbook. And from the first row and last row within each group, we have an HTML editor that allows us to construct a nicely formatted email message and embed dynamic tokens both within the subject line as well as the message body. I'd like to mention that besides the various email options that we just demonstrated, Visual Cut can take an Excel workbook and convert that into an interactive auto-refreshing web schedule, web grid, or web pivot table and charts that anybody can access from a web folder or a shared folder.